Shopping for Shoes by Tim Crouch. There's something Sean has forgotten about 10 pin bowling. Something absolutely fundamental to the experience. Something very much at the forefront of Siobhan's mind. Horrible bowling shoes. I ain't putting them on. You have to or you can't play. Who makes them? What? Who makes them? And so, excruciatingly, Sean hands over his Nike Air Jordans to the spotty kid at the counter. Siobhan stifles her laughter as she winks at the spotty kid and watches Sean wrestle with the laces of his ego as he puts on the bowling shoes. They go down to lane 14, where there's Orla and Priya and Aisha. Five pairs of bowling shoes. Sean's shoes sticking out like a sore thumb. Sean is now desperately wishing he hadn't come, and even more desperately hoping that none of his friends will see him. Not only is he wearing the geekiest shoes imaginable, he's surrounded by half the members of the school council. The girls who organised the boycott of the Nestle vending machine. Who led the walk out over the war in Iraq. He says very little, and spends most of his time staring at Javon, which is his way of chatting a girl up. They play one game, the girls are crap and spend most of their time giggling. Even though he hasn't played for years, Sean wipes the board with him, which helps repair his damaged ego. They go up to the counter, and Sean cringes as the girls reclaim their nerdy shoes. It's his time to retrieve his nikes and feel human again. But the supported kid comes back empty-handed. Sean's shoes have gone, he says, and he smiles at Siobhan. Sean feels like someone has punched him in the stomach. The girls are at the doors. Come on! Wait! My shoes! My shoes are... He looks at Siobhan, who has a huge grin on her face. The spotty kid at the counter is none other than her brother, Owen, and in her hand she holds a pair of Nike Air Jordans Mark I. Come and get them. Sean is in his stocking feet. Siobhan breaks from the gang. She goes through the door and out into the night. Sean goes after her. Siobhan runs. Sean chases. Sean laughs and, weirdly, Sean finds himself want to laugh, wanting to laugh too. They pass them all, out past McDonald's, KFC, TGI Fridays, and up towards the railway bridge. Sean has never been without shoes. His feet are tender, and he finds it hard to run. He treads on loose chipping from the road. He hobbles on until he comes to a sudden stop on the bridge. There, lit by the sodium glare of the streetlight, standing on the bridge parapet, dangling the ultimate icons of call above the busy mainline to Kent, is Siobhan. A glint in her eye. Don't do it! Don't do it. I thought I could just do it. Please, Siobhan, you're full, calm down. You said with these I could have what I wanted, when I wanted it. Just do it, remember? Shut up! Bloody shut up, Siobhan! People will see, give them back, it's not funny. No, it's not bloody funny. Shall I tell you about your precious shoes, Sean Holmes? Shall I just do it? Your shoes are probably made by some kid like you or me. Some scrawny kid working in a shit factory for shit hours for one quid a week so that you can feel a bit cool. You ain't got a clue, have you? Keith McCluskey would be so proud of his daughter. Sean, meanwhile, is a little mesmerised by what's going on. He's confused that he's not feeling as angry as he thinks he should be. In fact, he's quite enjoying the experience. In his socks, in the night, watching a mad, beautiful girl with fire in her eyes, and Siobhan goes on, and we in the muck should go along with it. We think we're being so bloody individual by, by wearing the same stuff as everyone else, but we're just sheep. We're bloody sheep. And with that, Siobhan hurls the Nike Air Jordans into the night sky. No. The laces have been tied together and the shoes spin up into the orange glare. Stretched above the road, there is a telephone wire. The shoes describe a perfect arc, twisting and spiralling. For a second, there's a chance they'll miss the wire, but then the left foot catches and the right just spins around it until they're well and truly tangled. And they hang there, like countless other trainers caught on countless other telephone wires. And Siobhan goes, sheep. And Sean is silent. His head and his heart fighting each other to death. He can't think of anything to say. And then Sean goes, bah. Things he loved most in the world are dangling beyond his reach, but he doesn't seem to care anymore. He's found something else to be interested in, and she's standing two feet away from him, panting, smiling, waiting for a response. 
and he doesn't know what to say. So, again, he goes, Bah. And Siobhan looks at him, and then she goes, Bah. And the two of them laugh, and the two of them bleat like sheep. 